So yeah, there were a couple signings. You excited about those? Couple of signings yesterday. No, no, not excited. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning anyway. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're in two hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. And no, no, they didn't sign the guy you wanted them to sign. They signed safety Keanu Neal, and they signed a nose tackle, Bryden Fajoko. Uh, Neal is a guy who's going to play Fajoko, maybe not so much. Uh, Neal is going to be the Terrell Edmonds replacement by every account, including the one you could make yourself just by looking at his resume. He will be the number three out of the three behind Minka Fitzpatrick and DeMonte Casey. But if the Steelers do, as expected, continue to deploy the three safety set, you're going to see a lot of him. Fahoko, he's depth. He's depth. Went undrafted out of LSU. And in his three years with the Chargers just now, he appeared in a total of 19 games. So that that's depth. The kind of depth that I want to see signed and you want to see signed, I think, most of you anyway, and there's some detractors to this, is, of course, bringing Bud Dupree back home. I won't be breaking any new ground and sharing with you or reiterating for you that I would love to see Bud back. But I do hear, again, on occasion from people who think, mm, yeah, maybe this isn't such a great idea, or it's got to be the right price, or it's got to be uh, the right usage. So on the occasion of this being the day after Bud did make his visit to the South Side, uh, he made no secret of that, snapping a photo of crossing the Fort Pitt Bridge into downtown and putting it on his Instagram with a great big Pittsburgh PA locator line. And if you follow these sorts of things, habitually, you'll know that a visit to the South Side often ends up with that player putting pen to paper before they walk back out the door. To take that further, when the player leaves and does not have this document completed, it's almost always seen as unlikely that they'll sign. How does it happen so quickly? Well, most of the homework is done by the time the player arrives. They'll have done all the film studies. You're not even going to bring somebody in if you don't already want them, if you don't already believe in them and their football abilities. If it's a free agent who's never played for the Steelers, as is almost always the case, then you do want to talk to them. You want to get a feel for them. But even then, there are other ways to do this type of homework. The real issue, the sticking point, or the part that just goes by like this, is, of course, the physical. And in Bud's case, his health is the only thing that can address how much you can pay him, or whether you feel he's able to contribute at all. What can you expect at Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh? Respect, rigor, relevance. That's the Point Park pledge. You'll be treated with respect while being challenged and supported academically to graduate with career-ready, relevant skills. Visit pointpark.edu to learn more. So let's say, for example, that Bud comes in and just aces everything. Just he shows that he is still the same freakish specimen that he was when he was here in Pittsburgh. He's overcome all of his issues, back issue, hips issue, and it is plural. The surgically repaired knee that might have contributed to those other ailments that he experienced in Nashville. All of that, just awesome. He's totally ready to go. Or maybe he looks at that and says, I mean, I'm still a really, really good football player. I want to be paid like a really, really good football player. Or not. Because I don't see that being realistic. Since Bud knows the moment he comes out of that tunnel and onto that bridge, and he sees the city and everything else here, 
he can be reminded that this is the city that has T.J. Watt and now Alex Highsmith at the outside linebacker position, and that he's not going to be a starter in Pittsburgh, not just because of his injuries, and he's also 30 years old, and, you know, these two guys are who they are right now, T.J. and Alex. So why would Bud have left the building without a deal? How did it become known to reporters that Bud left the building without a deal when reporters aren't allowed at the building right now? It's not open to us. Who from the team would have made that known and why? And what would have quashed this if, in fact, it was quashed? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to go further with speculation or anything, because that's always where I and pretty much all of us get ourselves in trouble. My hope, for a bunch of reasons, is that the physical went well. I'd love to see Bud continue his career, whether it's in Pittsburgh or elsewhere. My hope is that something would have come up in the physical that would require a little bit of extra evaluation, maybe an extra scan, maybe a second opinion of some kind, another look. And then from there, everybody can just wake up today and say, all right, we have our answers here. Let's make a decision. And then Bud signs a piece of paper and everything is just great. I am all in favor of reacquiring a healthy Bud. I'm going to say it one more time. I think the risks are minimal because his snap count will probably be in the Anthony Ciccolo range, meaning around 25 to 30 per game. I think that if you see TJ go down again, not to paint him as injury prone, but he's had a rough go of it lately, that you have someone else who can step in that isn't you know, a plunge off a cliff like Malik Reed was. And I believe that in that context, all of that put together, that Bud is a really nice investment for this football franchise, even if he costs a little bit more than someone on the outside might expect. If, if he's healthy. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need help with workers' comp, who filed for medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. Today's J1Q comes from Mike Irwin, who says, Sorry, DK, no wide receiver at pick 17. If the offensive tackles and the cornerbacks are gone, trade back, get another round two or round three pick, then pick a wide receiver if you want. The Steelers need a defensive lineman, an offensive tackle, an inside linebacker, a cornerback, and a safety first. Um, How do I do this? Okay, let's try it in Mike's tone. Sorry, Mike. Yes, wide receiver at pick 17, if that wide receiver is Jackson Smith and the Jigba. That was a subject of yesterday's show that apparently set off you and a whole bunch of other people, although there were also a bunch of people who agreed with it wholeheartedly. And then we always have, when we bring up wide receivers, that special sect off to the side of Pitt fans who just want to see Jordan Addison because something, something Pitt. If you are looking at this class and you are talking about wide receivers and you say that Addison is a better football player than Smith Najigba, then you are a Pitt fan. I say that with love, but it's the truth. Smith Najigba is a better player. And I don't care about the happy reunion with him and Kenny. And I don't care about their chemistry from Pitt and everything else here. I will always, always, always take the better football player. And then from there, let the quarterback and the new wide receiver, you know, go have breakfast together or something. The wide receiver thing and the way you phrased this question of yours, Mike, is such that 
you don't even leave open the possibility that a football player could fall to you, to your spot, that you have somewhere on your board that other people don't, where you just say, hey, we don't really care what our need is here. We don't care about an immediate need. We don't care about a long-term need. You want the best player. And I know some of this sounds, what's the word I'm looking for here? It it might come across as condescending. And I, I don't operate like that. I don't think like that. And I hope I never sound like that. But just consider what you're saying when you make only positions as a priority when it comes to this particular process. If you make a conscious decision to take this person over that person because of the position that they play, and you know that the person you're bypassing is a better overall football player, or maybe they just have a higher ceiling, like you see their frame and you believe because of the nature of it that it's going to fill out, and that player can then become this or that at an elite level. If you go back over NFL draft history, even if you just focus on the Steelers' own history in the event, you will see that there are countless examples of players who were taken whose positions were not needed at that time. And that even applies today when there's a more liberal usage of free agency than there's ever been, including by your favorite football team. The Steelers used to never touch free agents. Remember when James Ferrier was signed and we were all like, whoa, they went out onto the open market and got a player. That's not the case anymore. Now they're signing as many or more guys than anybody out there. Look at the last two years. Look at the volume of players who've been added. Look at the amount of money that's been committed. There's always a way around an immediate need. You do not, you should not be using the draft in that capacity except Except for anybody who's been yelling at me through this last couple of minutes. When it comes to the quarterback position, you could make all kinds of arguments either for or against utilizing a first round pick on Najee Harris. I will listen to those, even though I love the kid. I think he's been great. There's also all kinds of evidence to support the notion that you don't need to draft running backs at all. You can just kind of find them. But quarterbacks, quarterbacks are a special case. Quarterbacks have to come from the draft with very, very few exceptions. You're not going to run into some, uh, you know, late career fits magic type very often. You got to get your quarterbacks in the draft. And the higher that you select them, logically speaking, the better your chance. Other than that, I'm sorry. I could sit there and look at Andy Weidel's draft board and completely ignore the column that denotes somebody's position, especially early on. Later on, you can start addressing needs and, hey, we'd really like to get a, you know, uh, an offensive lineman out of this class. Let's make sure we try to get one here. But you still follow the board, and that goes double for early on. So just... If I'm wrong about this, then most sports executives are wrong as well across sports. I appreciate the question, Mike. I am grateful that you listen to Daily Shot of Steelers. I'm grateful for all of you listening. And we're going to do another one of these on Monday. 